Yes, folks. First, there was side. Then, there was side two. And then, after that, well, there was nothing for a long time. But now, well, soon, side three. So for those of you who haven't already seen uh, side three in the previous video that I made uh, back in January, I think it was, um, this is the side three cartridge uh, without a case as yet. Um, this is actually a different board to the one that I featured in the previous video. This is a pre-production board, uh, which doesn't have some of the uh, jumpers and things that were on the prior board. So it's reasonably, uh, if not fully, feature complete on the hardware side. Uh, and of course we are currently working on the firmware side of things and uh, things are progressing very well I have to say and uh, we made such good progress, uh, Candle and myself If the needle goes beyond here, you will be fired Does that make you feel stressed? Jen, does it? Uh, over the past couple of days that uh, we thought it would be uh, a nice idea to provide you with a little bit of an update show off a couple of the things that the cartridge can do uh, far from complete, uh, far from bug free at the moment, but it does give you an idea of what to expect. So uh, let's plug the cartridge into the 600XL here, which I've, since the cartridge has got no case at the moment, I've actually stuck a couple of compact flashcards down the cartridge slot. I just like to use this machine, it's my favourite machine at the moment. Alright, so let's switch the machine on. We'll hop into the... This machine has, of course, uh, Ultimate 1 Megabyte installed. You don't have to have Ultimate 1 Megabyte in the machine. The Side 3 will work standalone just as Side 2 did, but of course you can do extra things with it when you've got Ultimate 1 Megabyte installed. The first thing I'll show you uh, is the hard disk, uh, which does uh, basically work. And this is the, exactly the same idea as previously. Uh, whereby the cartridge provides the uh, the card interface, uh, if you like, and the Ultimate One Megabyte provides a PBI-based um, controller um, firmware for it. So if we boot the machine with Spartanos X enabled, we can have a look and see if we've got some partitions on the card. Of course, this cartridge uses SD cards rather than compact flash cards, which are far more readily available, uh, a lot cheaper. Uh, easier to find nowadays. So we've got drive three here. We got anything on? Yes, we've got we've got a partition on uh, drive three. We can run RW test here. There we go. Speeds are sort of comparable to side two. They're not quite there yet. There's a lot of uh, driver optimization to do and that sort of thing. But we're still knocking on the door for uh, 60k uh, per second, even with these pre-release um, drivers. So there's a hard disk, we can go into F disk as usual and do all the all the normal stuff that we would expect. There we go. Ultimate one megabyte side three PBI BIOS, etc. Read the partition table, etc. No problem at all. So that's that side of things. Now if we hop back into the BIOS now, and I'll turn off uh Sparta DOS X for the moment just so that it doesn't get in the way, and I'll turn off uh, the hard disk as well because what I want to show you is uh, the loader. Now in this case the loader on the side 3 cartridge, as you can see, side 3 loader this is of course a alpha version if you like, but it's based on the same loader as side 2 so if you have ultimate 1 megabyte and you buy one of these and you want to use the two together what you'll need to do is flash uh, new ultimate 1 megabyte firmware which won't even use the loader. I don't know, maybe we'll use the loader space on the ultimate 1 megabyte for something else in that case uh, but you'll always run the loader straight off the cartridge. So that's what's happening here. This loader is on the ROM on the cartridge, even though it was called uh, by pressing L in the BIOS screen in just the same way. But the uh, the built-in Ultimate One Megabyte loader simply isn't being used in this context now. So anyway, things function pretty much as you would expect, as you've become uh, accustomed to in the past. You've got fat partitions, you can open them up and inside of these folders we've got files and xex files that we can we can run just like so no problem at all now we go back in here and then we go back into the loader you see the light flashing there it shows uh, disk access i'm not sure you can see that so xex files um atr files as well uh, i'll demonstrate them we'll turn this 
Right, back on, go back into the loader. See if we've got some ATRs, find something good. Um, let's see. There you go, so there's your ATR, your disk image I started. I don't even know what it is I started there, but it's running. So ATRs and hard disk partitions, just as before. Uh, but I'm going to turn the hard disk off because I happen to know in this version there's a bug where it causes problems with cartridges. So we'll go back into the loader and I'll show you what is really the you know the headline feature of the side three, which is cartridge emulation, and that's what we're busy doing at the moment. So I've got a folder here which has some uh, XEGS uh, cartridges, banked cartridges. So we have support for uh, ROM files and CAR files. CAR files being ROM images with a 16-byte header that unambiguously describes what actual kind of cartridge it is. Uh, so if we pick the Ace of Aces um, cartridge and run that, and there we go, Ace of Aces. And there we go, that started up. So that's, uh, is that a 128K XEGS cartridge? I think it is. Uh, and likewise, we can run the ROM as well. We'll use some uh, powers of deduction to try and uh, figure out what kind of uh, banking scheme is used by uh, a ROM like that, but that one works as well. Uh, the way things are at the moment. Uh, we'll try some more. Uh, which one have I tried uh, previously? Ball Blazer. Let's try that one. So that's a 64k XEGS cartridge. We'll run that one. There we are. We have Ball Blazer. I can turn the volume up as well because it gives you more immersive experience. There we go. So let's have another look. Uh, so have we tried, we've tried that one, we've tried that one, what's this, 16k cartridge? So that's an unbanked flat 16k cartridge, uh, which obviously works fine. What have we got here, Atari Writer, Atari Artist, let's try Atari Writer, see if that works. Ah, there we go, Atari Writer cartridge, no problem at all, that's a 16k cartridge I think it is, um, as far as I can remember, so there we go, no problem. Now. What you may be wondering is, say I launch uh, Atari Writer, for example, can I use uh, disk images and the hard disk partitions on the SD card at the same time? And I thought right from the outset, in fact, I thought for about the past five years that this was going to be an absolutely essential uh, feature. So yes, you are going to be able to mount cartridges, disk images, and use hard disk partitions all at once, all from the same cartridge, and if there are con, there may be situations where the the cartridge has a strange banking scheme where it's impossible to have the registers for the hard disk coexist. But they'll be few and far between, and we may, we might even be able to come up with a way around that more than likely. But I think that's going to be in the in the minority of cases. You've got OSS cartridges like Action Mac sixty five etc., which are all going to be supported. And we know that they can coexist with things like Sparta DOS X, which also has uh, banking registers in the same area. So uh, the vast majority of cartridges that you would need to use with disk storage anyway, I mean, a game cartridge, you're unlikely to need access to the disk. Uh, but the vast amount of pr productivity cartridges uh, whereby you would want to use a disk and save information and load stuff, you'll be able to do that right off the card. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about it is that the whole thing works together and that was absolutely the top of the list of things I wanted to accomplish here and I'm not gonna uh, be satisfied until this, that actually works. So from the same uh, loader here uh, you will manage uh, emulated cartridges, disk images, uh, hard disk partitions, XEX files all from the same place uh, without going anywhere else basically. Let's have another look at some more cartridges here. We've got Williams cartridges. Now, Williams cartridges uh, are the latest edition. I have barely even tested half of these, actually. Uh, so let's pick one and try it. Press start to begin. This Oh, this is the darts game. This is great. I remember um, maybe about 30 years ago having, well, probably more. Late 80s sitting in my friend's uh, bedroom he had his 65 xc and he had this game and he must have had it on cassette actually 
um, but I, I was always amazed by the uh, the graphics on here for some reason I was completely I couldn't figure out how there was color there but now I just see it's fairly straightforward it's just a PMG underlay or something nothing complicated about it whatsoever but it looks nice anyway so that there's a now what what size cartridge was that one that was a 64k uh, these are rounded up by the way so that's a slightly over 64k so it comes up to 65 um let's see what what else can we try there's half of these i haven't tried yet so this is actually bleeding edge stuff boulder dash 2 let's try that see what see what happens here oh there we go that works i haven't got the joystick plugged in here so anyway so that works so this is you're your, your live here we're doing a live test it could go wrong at any moment as it normally does what else well, one that I did try um, was this one, Dyna Killers. That was one of the first Williams cartridges we tested. Uh, so there we go. Dyna Killers. So you get the idea anyway. Uh, hopefully you get the idea. Now, when it comes to standalone operation, you'll see the same user interface when you haven't got Ultimate 1 megabyte installed. You'll start the machine up and depending on which position you've got the switch in, the loader will come up straight away. You won't have things like uh, PBI support for bootable partitions and such like. You'll have a side driver for this device just as you had for um, side 2 which I've got to write yet as well. You'll also have Sparta DOS X on the cartridge and you've got a button here, a reset button just as you did before so you can start a cartridge. Cartridges will work standalone, XEX files will work standalone no problem and when you want to come back to the menu you'll just press the little button here Hit reset on the machine and the loader will come straight back. When you're using the cartridge with Ultimate One Megabyte, the button will act as a swap button, just as before. So the takeaway point from this anyway is that basically it's going to do everything. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, new hardware from uh, Sebastian Candlosin uh, is always an exciting thing and uh, this is going to be absolutely no exception. Uh, so just to recap, side 3, instead of using compact flashcards, now uses full-size SD cards. Uh, it has 2 megabytes of RAM on it, uh, 4 or 8, I forget which, 4 or 8 megabytes of ROM, um, a real-time clock, a uh, mode switch, uh, reset come uh, ATR swap button on it, uh, and without Ultimate 1 megabyte, so on a stock machine, it's going to handle uh, executable files, it's going to handle cartridges of all possible different formats and you'll have your uh, hard disk, your Sparta DOS X hard disk um, which you can use with the side driver when I've written it um, and on an ultimate one megabyte machine you'll have um, bootable hard disk partitions, disk images plus the cartridges and the executables all together all handled from the same loader menu and, and what what could be better? I wonder, it's an honest question what could possibly be better than that? Uh, I don't know if you can think of anything. I certainly can't. Uh, but anyway, so uh, yes, yeah, so that's the second uh, update on side three. Uh, and I will be doing another one shortly when we've got some more cartridge formats working and what I'm particularly keen to demonstrate uh, when it's possible to do so uh, is something like uh, Mac 65 or Action uh, working with, uh, with alongside the hard disk uh, on the SD card uh, and disk images and that sort of thing probably won't be long before we can do that and another exciting innovation uh, on this cartridge is uh, you remember when you had uh, reprogrammed the CPLD on a side 2 or an ultimate 1 megabyte, maybe there was a bug fix or some new feature, same with incognito, you'd have to have a, a, a Zilinx platform cable, it could be a parallel cable or it could be one of the USB cables you can buy on eBay and you'd download the huge uh, Zilinx um, lab tools suite. That won't be necessary with this because as well as being able to update the flash ROM as usual, so if I bring out a new uh, loader or there's a Sparta DOS X update that you need to put on, you can flash it in the normal manner. But you can also do um, 
updates to the actual logic of the board. So not only will you be able to update the, the flash ROM in the normal manner, say using UFlash or some similar tool uh, to put a new loader on it or update Sparta.dos X, uh, but you'll also be able to update the actual, uh, the JED file as it's called, this is a lattice uh, chip, uh, you'll also be able to do that in software as well, which means you don't have to buy a cable and it'll be much, much easier to add new features to the actual hardware itself. So a very, very versatile piece of hardware and uh, the potential is there, of course, uh, for us to come back to it in the future and just add more and more and more stuff. If maybe users will come up with ideas or uh, I've got ideas uh, of things that I'll probably want to do in the long term as well. Uh, so it's just going to keep improving all the time. So yeah, if you want to stay abreast of uh, Side 3 updates and of course all the other stuff that goes on the channel, do subscribe if you're not already uh, subscribed to the channel and click the bell so you get a notification. So yeah, I'd love to hear what your points of view are. Uh, if you want to leave them in the comments below based on what you've heard in this video and what I've described to you, just leave your questions below and I'll do my best to answer them. I've got more cartridge types to uh, implement and uh, an enormous, enormous amount of code to write. So I suppose I'd better get back to it. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.